Hi everyone on YouTube, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to this channel, I talk all about paganism, witchcraft, crystals, I talk about being visually impaired or blind, I talk about having Crohn's disease, LGBTQ stuff. Also, welcome to September. Um, happy, for some people it's self-care September, so happy self-care September. Um, happy bisexual um, visibility week for those in the bisexual community. Um, I want to talk about that in a separate video. This video, though, is all about the tag. It's called My Magical YouTube Journey. <clears throat> Excuse me, allergies. I have been trying to record this video for a while, but I keep having stuff pop up. But I'm super excited to make this video. There are 25 questions. I'll leave the questions in the description below if you're interested in trying it. I highly recommend it. Um, this was started by Starlight the Wild Witch. I will also link her video in the channel below. So without further ado, here we go into the questions. Question one, what is your channel name and the significance behind it? Um, as you can see, this channel name is Shadow Sun. Um, that is my <clears throat> craft name, um, like public magical name. And also it stems from partially the like magical aspects of my craft in the sense that I work with both <clears throat> the moon and sun and also I guess you could say um, what people would describe dark and light in the sense that I work sort of in the middle when it comes to magic. Um, uh, I try to be as neutral as possible when it comes to magic personally but um, also having to do so it's partially that the way my magical practice is it's also um, the way that I see things um, visually so everything's kind of very clear in light but everything else is in shadow if that makes sense my physical um, eyes everything is in shadow like looking at this phone I can tell that it's my phone only because I'm holding it but if I wasn't holding it, it would just kind of look like a blurry shadow of some sort so that's <clears throat> really it behind my name it's just a combination of those things but um, mostly just the Magical, magical aspects and just like how I see in general. So um, hopefully that made sense. And on to question two, what type of content do you create on your channel? For example, vlogs, um, educational, DIY, live streams, and so on. <clears throat> For myself, um, I would say I do mostly um, videos on a particular topic um vlogs are something i want to do more of um i try to do a little bit of everything so like sometimes it's a demonstration of how i might set up an altar or make a crystal elixir and other times it's um something else it just depends on what i um want to share um a lot of the times it's just me talking about a particular topic or sharing a particular um Thing that people can do for their practices for the time being um, but I do want to get more into like vlogs and things like that so question three is what inspired you to start your channel honestly a lot of it had to do with other people on YouTube I would see these amazing creators making stuff and I have, have a lot to say but I am very camera shy nobody would know that but I am very camera shy and because I'm camera shy um, I've gotten better about it now I was very apprehensive about, oh, you know, am, am I going to be heard in this sea of people, as it were? Um, what what am I going to bring forward that hasn't already been said about a particular topic? And it could be anything from crystals to, you know, being out as a pagan or um, that kind of thing. Like, I didn't want to rehash old topics. And um, I would comment on people's videos. I would be watching people's live streams and things like that. And I'd, I felt that I was um, <clears throat> missing out on a lot. So I started a blog, um, Shadows on Musings.net, and I felt that I was getting traction there in the sense that like, I was really sharing what I wanted to say, but I felt like I could have reached more people, and I felt like, um, as camera shy as I was during the pandemic, I felt like, you know what, I want to make a channel. I want to really say my piece and, and share what I want to share um, and try to help people just as much as my blog helped people um, in the sense that like people were reading it. So I wanted to give other people opportunities to 
look at content that I was already making just in video form. And also the people on YouTube too. Like I felt like I want to add my voice to the community. I want to help people in the community. I want to help people understand that like regardless of your abilities, whatever they are, if you have a physical disability or not, you can make your practice meaningful and inclusive and important to your life. And I felt that um, better late than never. So I felt inspired by a lot of people on YouTube. Um, the first person I ever saw on YouTube was Tiptoe Chick. And then after her was Cricket Song, um, who's not on YouTube now, but, and also um, people like, who's no longer on YouTube also, but like, she went by the Sunshine State Witch, or um, now I think it's a bridge to Britney. She was also really inspirational. Um, Starlight was also inspirational as well. So all these people kind of culminated and helped me understand that like I have a voice to the community and I took the plunge and did it during the pandemic. Um, my intro video was kind of cringy because the video was poor quality and the audio is poor quality but I still made it anyways. <clears throat> so going on to question four, how long have you been on YouTube as a content creator? Um, I've only been on YouTube since 2020. I made my first video on March 24th. So only three years as of this year. And next year it'll be four years. I gotta plan something for that. Um, I really um, have found a lot of learning through YouTube and I feel like I'm more effective at speaking than writing is what I've learned. Um, anyhow, on to question six. Um, what hobbies outside of your channel? Um, wait, let me read that. What are your hobbies outside of your channel? This is a tough question, actually, because because I've gone back to school, I haven't really had a lot of time for anything else. Um, I love making these videos, and even though it says outside of the channel, creating in some fashion is something I like to do. So, um, whether that's like even if it's just making videos about other things right like just making things um landscape photography even though i don't have vision for it i love taking landscape pictures of places i go um you know if i'm commuting i take pictures um on my commute um if i'm out and about i want to take pictures of something unique so i guess <clears throat> sorry i guess landscape photography would be one of them um i like reading i guess um I used to be into other things like, you know, uh, it's weird, meditation has now become not a hobby, but um, more aspect of my crafts, but meditation was something I used to de-stress, and the reason I mention it as a hobby is because it became something I just love doing, and I actually miss doing it, but like, um, hiking, um, I miss hiking a lot, so hiking would be it, um, nature walks, um, something I want to continue to do at some point that uh, I feel is important so that's pretty much it um, I used to do ceramics at one time but I don't have the space for any of that um, I actually want to get into like some kind of craft at some point I don't know what um, I don't have patience a lot of the time so who knows what I'll get into <laughs> anyhow um, on to question six um, that's all on the hobbies front is there a new style of content that you want to try? Yes, I want to really try getting more into edited videos and making little clips and putting those clips together. I want to try vlogs. I want to try more, <clears throat> excuse me, demonstrational pieces, um, demonstrating how I do something, uh, which may be rectified through um because my tripod is broken so i just have to hold the phone but apart from that i want to try um just new ways of making content um i want to add an intro at some point so all all things that i want to try i also want to try like videos on how to do something i guess i don't want to say teaching videos because i don't feel like i'm equipped to be a teacher per se but I guess ways in which you can 
I guess I guess you can only classify it as teaching videos, I guess. Like how to do this. This is one way of doing a particular spell or a particular um form of ritual or whatever. I want to try something like that um at some point. So question seven is how do you plan out your content? Um I'm sorry to say, but I, I try really hard. I have lists on lists on lists. But every time I have a list, something, I've either already done it or something pops up. So I try to have a list of things that I talk about and a list of topics um, that I want to share. But unfortunately, I only have, you know, I, I try to put in my calendar um, and just things just keep popping up. So a lot of the lists get created into bigger lists. I, I, I have so many lists, I need to consolidate the lists. So um, typically I, I try to pick a topic from a list, do those topics from that list, and then um, make sure that they're, you know, spaced out so that the topics kind of plug in with one another. And usually I try to plan it around um, so for example like the equinox or something of the sort right um, I try to plan it out and put it in my calendar to film and everything um, so that's generally how I try to plan content honestly it doesn't always work though question eight is what are your tools of the trade example cameras mics lighting tripod is it tripod? I can't. Oh no, software. Software. I can read. <laughs> I'm, I'm reading this with my braille device one-handedly, so I'm only I'm missing things here. Um. So for me, honestly, I don't have fancy equipment. Um. I don't have the vision, um, to read print in that way. So, um, the only software I use is iMovie on all my iOS devices and all my Apple devices to edit videos. Um, I use my phone literally to film videos um, and I used to have a tripod and the tripod is broken and I haven't had a chance to really sit there and replace it because I don't know how it works with the bigger phones if they can fit. I also don't have a permanent space for the tripod either. Um, I've debated getting a GoPro um, but I'm not sure yet because I'm not sure how those work in terms of like how do you get the video from one place to the other. So for the time being and foreseeable future, um, I'm mostly just using my phone and iMovie software for editing when I make edited video. Question nine, as a content creator, do you experience burnout? If so, what does that look like for you and how do you recover from it? Um, I don't feel like I experience burnout per se, but I think that might be because I haven't been doing it long enough and, and my consistency is off my, it's, it's completely off and that kind of thing. Um, that being said, uh, I, I think I struggle with just finding the time, which then makes me feel like, oh no, you know, I am really big on making things that are quality but also like meaningful like you're going to get something out of it not just a video just to make a video if that makes sense um i want it to be something that people are going to look back on and go oh i really appreciated that or or i want people to look back on it and and come away with it with something um so i guess quality and i just feel like i don't feel burnout necessarily but i feel like the way that i recover from just feeling um, apprehensive about consistency is to just make videos when I can make videos and make sure that they're try you know trying to keep my inner perfectionist out of the game <laughs> and also just knowing that if the people were interested in the channel in the first place that they would continue watching so no matter what video came out um, so yeah if I do experience burnout though if this is something that I do encounter I think the way that I'd recover from it is to dive into something I've never done before. So like if I'm making videos like talking like this, I'd probably go outside and make a video about something outside or do something interspersed with that so I don't feel like I'm burning myself out. Question 10 is, which video are you most 
proud of and why? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I would have to say, just thinking about it, um, that's a, yeah, I don't know. Um, I would probably say my video on either well because I'm, ch I'm choosing between like the, the first video I started for um, crystal elixirs like the crystal elixir video or maybe um, my video on um, crystal um, like the crystal series video where I'm talking about crystals I would say um, maybe the last video um, where I talk about like resources for crystals um, on but honestly I, I think maybe more the um, it's hard to say um, uh, probably the meditation um, s series at the beginning of the video where I'm discussing meditation just because I feel like I covered everything that I wanted to cover but also I covered like how meditation doesn't need to be this complicated situation and how people can learn to meditate without feeling like it's something that they have to do if that makes sense um I feel like I did well with that video um and now that I'm really thinking about it though I think I have to say um now that I'm really kind of giving it more thought the video I would actually choose would be um how I read books as a blind witch actually and the reason I picked that now that I was really giving it some thought is because that was one of my first edited videos and I was really scared about putting everything together and I feel like um I was able to really articulate like how I um obtain books and read them and how um, I can kind of demystify it for some people because a lot of people just assume like that blind people read the same way kind of thing and I wanted to share my piece on that like how I personally do that in my practice and path so I'd have to say that video honestly um, I feel like I, even though it was my first edited video it came out really well like you could see what I wanted people to see there's a little picture of my note taker in that video um, you know, I feel like I articulated myself in terms of like explaining how I obtained books and um, also that video on like where I obtained them is a good video as well. But I'd say that video, um, how I read books as a blind witch for sure. Sorry for the long winded answer. Question 11 is who inspires you in, oh, within the magical slash um, pagan youtube community oh my gosh um that's a lot of people <laughs> that's a lot of people pe people uh that's a lot of people guys i would say um um starlight the wild witch for sure um i'm really enjoying like all her videos on like herbs and things like that i would say um kellyanne maddox if you have no idea who i'm talking about you need to watch her videos um, Ivy's Grove, Tell the Norse Witch, um, um, Ivy the Occultist, uh, Thorn Mooney as well, um, amazing stuff, um, oh my goodness, um, the people who, uh, Blue Knight for Dragon Divinations, um, I like their stuff, um, also, um, the Witch of Enchantment, I would say also, um, who else am I watching right now? And who else? Who else? There's so many. There's so many. I could literally make a whole list. Um, Night Willow Crafts, also, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the channel right now. But yeah, Night Willow Crafts for sure, um, Leanne's Witchy Room, and 
I believe they go by the Norse Pagan as well. They're also really good channels. Um, they all inspire me for different ways. Oh, and um, Taya, of course, from, I believe, I'm trying to remember her channel name. But yeah, Taya, for sure, from her channel as well. But I'll, I'll try to link all the channels I'm mentioning here. And I'm trying to think if there's anyone else. I can't think if there's anybody else right now. But there's so many, there's so many. So um, all these people are amazing. So definitely check them all out. All these people have interesting ways of um, sharing their craft in their in their space. Um, also, I just thought about a couple more. Um, Witchfoot, who I've been watching recently, is really good. Um, I like her just no nonsense attitude about everything and just how she does all of these um different videos on like moon water and different um aspects of witchcraft also um that witch brenda and uh, house of witchcraft um and so i believe they're called son of Celine. um they're really good as well so i'll try to link all these channels if i miss someone i apologize in advance um i have trouble tagging people but i will do my best so question 12 is are there any channels you would recommend oh 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 well there's plenty i just listed a bunch of people yeah um i like i said ivy the occultist starlight the wild witch till the norse witch um oh i just thought of a couple more people albine green um son of Celine. um all the people i mentioned previously um, Ivy's Grove, um, The Norse Pagan, Thor Mooney, and also, I'm trying to think of somebody else I haven't mentioned yet. Integrative, and Integrative uh, Mysticism is also really good. So I say with those channels and the people I've mentioned, uh, previously. So I'll do my best to add everyone on the list. And, um, Taya, of course, and also, oh, Jasmine, Jasmine Ambrosia. Jasmine Ambrosia is also another one I'd recommend. So I'll try to keep everyone on the list. If I miss someone, again, I apologize. Uh, question 13 is, do you believe there are misconceptions about being a magical pagan YouTuber? Yes. Yes, I do. I think... The pro so this is my thing. I think that the misconceptions are that we all kind of create the same type of content on the same type of topics when we all kind of have a diverse set of topics. And that we all have the same way of creating content um, when we all have different ways of creating content. So I might create content on the same topic, but I might create it a different way. I might use a different style. Um, I think also people just think we have all the content together, I think. You know, like everything's kind of perfect and there's a lot of mishaps and things that happen. Um, I think people think that um, we all are the same path as well, I feel like. Um, everybody's the same path when we're all on different paths i think um those are my conceptions that i could think misconceptions that i could think of uh question fortune is what do you like or dislike about being on youtube um there's nothing i can say that i don't like um i really like the community feel um for the most part i feel like the only thing I, I think the only thing I don't like is like I feel like the community could be a little more interconnected. I, I kind of wish we had a way of like responding to one another, to where we can all see each other's responses to certain topics. Um, but apart from that, like I really like being on YouTube. I like creating and I like um, being a part of the community and putting my voice to things. And I also like helping people and you know being able to share. Um, to help someone else um, something if it's something simple great if it's something complicated great if I help someone if one person watches my video I'm happy 
I, I, I have done something if one person watches it. If multiple people watch it, I'm even happier. But if I can help one person, I am just over the moon about it because that means I've, I've shared, I've done something, I've participated. Um, like doing these tag videos is great because um, I feel like I learn a lot from everyone and we all kind of can learn from each other and we all are connected in, in some way through YouTube because we're all kind of creating conversations around our various paths and we're sharing and we're and we're learning from each other and we're we're helping each other grow as as people as pagans as youtubers you know everybody has something to contribute so i really like that aspect of it i like um you know being able to be um here to share something that will help someone in the community or outside the community um, to be able to help them grow and help them learn something or try something new and i also learning from creating the content as well i'm learning how to you know edit and make content and organize my thoughts even though they're not always necessarily organized so hopefully that was helpful so question 15 is what are some of your challenges and struggles you face creating on this platform and and how do you overcome them? A lot of it has to do with me learning how to navigate the platform and also learning how to add things um, like photographs to the video for example, um, adding photos to the video and making sure that they work, if that makes sense. Um, also, just getting the video to upload sometimes is a struggle. Um, not just, it's not like an accessibility issue, it's more just uh, sometimes it doesn't work or, you know, that kind of thing. I usually, if I know I'm making a long video, like this one, right? Um, I will make sure I do nothing else but do that upload so that I am able to work on all of that and focus on that. Um, when I make videos, I typically take as long as it takes to make them so that I don't struggle as much. I put a lot of things to the side. Um, if I know I'm going to have a day where I'm not doing a lot of things that need to get done immediately and I am filming videos, I try to film videos so that I'm able to focus on uploading them and making sure that they're done and can, you know, worked on. Because the struggle I have is making sure that they're uploaded, making sure that they're um, in the right playlists because it can get kind of tricky. So I overcome it by just making the time, carving lots of time to put in the work to make the content and to upload the content effectively and to make sure that, um, nothing has gone awry um i also overcome it through like if i need a help with um something i've never done before on youtube then i'll ask i'll ask people that have done it before so question 16 is what is your opinion on monetization paywalls or other exclusive content um it says example Patreon or other membership services. Uh, for me personally, I don't have an issue with those things. I personally don't want to participate in them because I feel like it changes the dynamic of the content and the dynamic. Not the dynamic of the content, but it changes the dynamic of the people watching the content. I feel like, cause you know. It's not a bad thing that it's exclusive because somebody's taking the time to make it. And for some people, that's their livelihood. So by all means, if that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. Um, I just feel like it depends on the circumstances, really. Um, again, I don't, I don't have an issue personally. I've supported many people on Patreon before when I could. Um, and I've had to stop now because of monetary issues. Um, so with that being said, like, if it's something that is, they need to do that because it's their livelihood and they are, it's what they need to do, 
and they have a reason for it then i understand um i think it's context specific um because i'm wary about like just watching anybody on patreon like if it's somebody that i know in the community then yeah i'm gonna watch it but it's not i'm not gonna support every patreon person that i see because we don't know if the content is quality we don't know why they're making the content i think you know the motivation behind it if that makes sense but generally i don't have an issue with those types of services i think if you're doing it for the right reasons and you are in the sense that you are not trying to like scam people and take advantage of people then by all means question 17 is do you have any boundaries on this platform why or why not um I suppose the biggest boundary would be like there's certain things I won't discuss, um, personal things. Apart from that, I'm generally open. I will discuss most things. Um, the personal stuff um, is just it's personal. Um, I think it's important to have um, boundaries in every situation, and I feel that um, discussing things that are not deemed for like the public because this is a public platform just being mindful of what i share i suppose um I'm, I'm sharing generally everything for the most part but there are things that are just private to me that i won't necessarily share um and that's generally why <clears throat> because it's you know personal to my life and that sort of thing um and just being mindful of other people not everybody has the best intentions um not anyone here, but just as a general rule, I feel like there's certain things that, because sharing, if you overshare, right, then you have nothing that's for yourself. Um, I'm not going to be like so closed off that I won't share anything, but I will share certain things that I feel um, I want to share and other things I will not. Question 18 is, do you have any current goals for your channel uh, my biggest goal is to get consistent um, or as consistent as I can be um, my other biggest goal is to um, really dedicate more time to it and make more videos um, and that's gonna come with time so bear with me but yes I want to make more videos I want to be a little more consistent so I'm starting with this week with this video and I'm gonna go from there uh, one step at a time so if you're if you're sticking around thank you thank you um, but those are my two biggest goals right now um, if I can get more subscribers that would be great um, but that's kind of I, I know that that's gonna come with some time too so I'm just gonna stick with you know videos and consistency would be the biggest thing so um, question 19 is what are some of the mistakes you've made and how do you fix them i guess my biggest mistake is being inconsistent i don't know of any mistakes that i can think of and if i have i guess i don't know i'm sorry i apologize for those um, you know issues of not knowing what mistakes i've made um i think if i did though um like consistently consistency being my biggest mistake in that like i'm not I'm not I'm putting content out, but like not everybody's, ex you know, you don't expect it from me. So like not everybody might be checking or um, I guess another thing would be like I'm not um, sharing as often about other things. I, I don't know how to answer this really. I guess my the way that I want to try to fix all of this in general is um, just to make more time for it make more time for the people interact i want to interact more with everyone so that's my biggest 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 mistake too is not interacting with the people in my community page more or in general so uh, i want to try to find a way to interact with everyone on my page more so stay tuned for that i'll find a way uh question 20 is what are some of your ways your channel has grown since your first video well uh, i tried my hand at editing videos um i don't my video is in poor quality and poor video 
I suppose, um, I feel like become, I, I can speak, I have become more refined in my speaking, I feel. Uh, I have been able to organize my thoughts more effectively, and I'm not using earbuds, guys. If you watch some of my older videos, I'm using earbuds because my mic was broken and it's a whole fiasco. Oh, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm making videos about um, various other topics and, you know, um, as you can see, uh, they're working out, I, I guess. Um, I would say that, um, I've learned a lot. I've learned about, learned a lot, of, learned a lot about making content and learned a lot about sharing things and um, I've opened up more honestly I've shared more about having Crohn's and um, what that's like and being visually impaired so I feel like I've grown tons from this and I thank you for being here question 21 is have you ever wanted to quit making videos why or why not yeah but not for the reason you think uh, mainly because I feel like if I don't have the time to put something into something, then I won't because it's not going to be my best work. That's my inner perfectionism coming out. But also, I want to really be there for the people that I'm making content for. And if I can't do that, I would feel pretty badly. Um, and I don't want it to become a chore, honestly. I don't. I don't want it to become a chore. And at one point... I, I did think that, it, oh, something I have to do, and I don't want it to be that way. It's something I enjoy doing, so I want to keep it that way. I want to keep it creative and enjoyable. So, um, yeah, there has been a point where I thought about, never mind, I don't want to do this anymore. But I really thought about it. I thought about my why, like, who am I making the videos for and why am I making them? So that really got me out of that. Question 22 is, what do you wish you knew before starting your YouTube channel? Um, wait, there's something else there. What? Do, do, do. YouTube channel journey. Um, I wish I had known that it wasn't that complicated to make a video. I Everybody I've watched or have seen in, you know, just a regular YouTube videos outside of the YouTube videos um, on this community. Uh, you know, they all look fancy. They all look like they're in a studio or something and there's nothing wrong with that do you but it felt like i had to get all that stuff and like i felt like i had to measure up somewhere and yeah i wish i had known that it wasn't that complicated i wish i had known that i could just make a video i wish it, that i had known that i'm adding to the community i wish that i had known that i'm a part of the community because um, I felt like I wasn't part of it just being off YouTube. And I wish that I had known that um, it's not that complicated. Um, that that it's not that complicated to make videos on the complicated to upload. That I wouldn't have as many issues as I thought I would with accessibility, with all these different things. Um, that's stuff I wish I knew. And I'm glad that I, I'm glad that I tasted, participated in this and doing this. Question 23 is, do you post on any other platforms? If so, what are they? Yes. So, for those who want to see more of my content, follow me on TikTok. I am on TikTok and I'm going to make myself available to post more talks, TikToks uh, consistently there as well. Follow me on Instagram. I'm on uh, formerly Twitter, aka X, but I don't post there as much. I, I may actually get rid of that account. Um, but definitely TikToks and Instagram, I would say definitely follow me there. So um, um, they're all linked below, but I will make sure just Instagram, Shut Up Musings, TikTok, I believe is also under the same name. Um, if not, uh, just click on my bio page or my community page and some of my YouTube or my TikTok videos are linked there. Um, so feel free to definitely follow me there. Um, question 24 is, do you have any advice for those wishing to create a channel? Do it. Number one, get a camera, film, do it. Just take the plunge. It's worth it. And you know what? If you don't 
see results or you feel like you're not doing a good job, you probably are. It's okay to mess up. Um, make a video, even if it's just something simple as responding to this tag. Um, or make a video on your favorite um, crystal. Whatever your niche is, go with it. Just go with it. Make a video. Take the plunge. It's, you know, it's worth everything. Your voice matters. So, by all means. Um, also, be as consistent as you can be. Um, and just definitely give it a try. You won't know until you try. And uh, question 24. Five. Who would you tag in this video? Honestly, I'm not sure. Uh, I would say anybody watching this video, if you haven't made a video yet, try this video out. Make a tag video. Um, or if you um, are interested in this tag, make a video. Um, I just tag anybody watching. If you haven't seen this tag, do this tag. It's amazing. Um, thank you, Starlight, for creating it. And if you like what you see, please like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Hopefully the shakiness wasn't too bad in this video. Um, like I said, I was holding the phone with one hand and reading with the other with my device here. So hope all are well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe, and share if you feel inclined. And I hope you all are doing well. Many blessings.